Hey guys, Todd from Lowbrow Customs here again. Today we're going to show you how to tackle that pesky rocker box leak on your Evo Sportster. Very common issue that happens with these bikes over time. The gaskets wear out and they start leaking right underneath this chromium part in between the cylinder head and the rocker box. Rocker box gasket leak fix 101. Let's get rolling. Woo! All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and remove the gas tank. We have this gas tank lift kit, a gas box part that we sell on the website. We really wouldn't need to remove the gas tank to do this front rocker box, but we'll take it off anyway, because uh, in the real world at your house, you're probably gonna need to take your tank off. So I've uh, already removed the rear bolt. We'll go ahead and pop the front one out and get the tank off here. The gas, gas line disconnected. If you have a vacuum operated fuel valve, don't forget to unplug your vacuum line. So this will just make life easier. And we are only going to do the front one because the rear one's not leaking. You'll find if you're, if you're doing front and rear at the same time, the rear one can be very difficult to remove the top lid and reinstall it because it's so darn close to the frame. Uh, but it is possible it will come out of there. And you can get it fixed, but for the video, we're just gonna be doing the front one. Now you've got four socket head Allen for just the, just the lid to take off. Those are gonna be 3 16 uh, There's all different kinds of ways you can do that. You can use a regular Allen wrench, or you can use a socket with the 3 16 There's also a specialty tool made for this job. This is your uh, rocker box. Well, this one says intake manifold on it, but it, it's the uh, same tool where this will get into tight spots. And then I'm gonna be using this because I like my quarter inch ratchet for this job. And I have a, a very short 3 16 which also gets into some tight spots. So go ahead and remove those. They are torqued. Take all four of those out and then we'll take the lid off and then you can see what's going on underneath here. <clears throat> And this really isn't a difficult job for the home mechanic. Uh, no reason to pay shop wages. The only real special tool we're gonna be using today is gonna be a torque wrench because we need to torque the rocker box after when we put the new gaskets on there to fix the leak. Okay, so I just noticed when I was loosening the last fastener, it's lifting the rocker box off, which is not a bad thing because sometimes these will get real stuck on there. And if that happens, you can just grab your dead blow and give it a whack and that should break it free. You don't ever wanna, uh, you don't ever wanna put a screwdriver in between here to pry on it because it will mark it up and then it'll look like crap. And there's that lovely top end smell. Boy, you'll smell it when you do yours. It's stinky. That one is really stuck in there and the gasket's coming off with it. There's our lid. And then you've got these rubber gaskets like so. One there and another one in the middle like so. You're replacing those. And then you have the middle ring, which is just gonna pop off as soon as it gets unstuck. There she goes. There's your middle. And this is our breather umbrella right here. Little flapper breather valve thingy. We can go ahead and take that out of there because we're gonna put a new one of those in. And now we've got four fasteners here that are gonna take a half inch socket. And then we have three fasteners that are gonna take a 7 16 And then we have two socket head 3 16 And that's gonna enable you to remove the rocker box and get to the bottom gasket and that's actually where this one is leaking and then we have i'm sorry one more rubber gasket here so there's a little groove in here there's a groove here gasket there middle section goes on next with another groove another gasket gasket in the middle bottom gasket okay so once you get to this point 
The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to remove both spark plugs front and rear and you're going to want to jack up the bike so you can get the wheel off the ground and then you're going to put it in gear and you're going to rotate the motor and you're going to watch the rocker arms go up and down and you want both rocker arms to be down. You don't want one, I'll show you when we jack it up, you'll see how one comes up and goes down, it's opening and closing the valves. You don't want to un take this off when it's loaded. You don't want it to be opening a valve when you're loosening these. So we're going to unload the valve uh, rockers and get the rest of the fasteners out and then we'll get to the leaky gasket under here. Pop your plug wires off and both spark plugs out. That will allow the engine to turn much easier with the spark plugs out because it won't be trying to make compression. You're basically letting it breathe. Okay, we got our handy dandy lift here. I like to jack it up by the uh, boss where the exhaust mount is. We just need it up high enough so that the wheel is off the lift. Then we're going to put it into second gear. And then we'll go ahead and watch the rockers going up and down. Okay, now we've got it in gear. And little force. Ah, hear that? See that? See the rockers going up and down? There, that one's, the intake just lifted and went back down. There goes the exhaust is lifting and coming back down. And now you can see that they're both all the way down, so it's okay to loosen the bolts to, re, to lift this off. If you were to loosen the bolts with one of the valves open, it's going to be pushing it off, and that's not cool for the threads or the motor. Okay, whatever your preference is, once again, on tools. Uh, I happen to have a kind of half deep 7 16 here, six point, because this one fastener is kind of down in there a little bit, so a standard socket doesn't work so good in that position. I like to take this, all the small ones out first because there will still be a little bit of pressure on the rockers, and I don't want that pressure pushing against those small fasteners. I'll do these four larger fasteners last. So we'll take the three that take a seven sixteenths out first. And once they're loose like that, they should come right out by hand. And there's also a washer that just hanging out right there. Make sure. You're not losing things down in there because that could cause trouble when you go back together. If you got a stray washer floating around in there, she might be unhappy with you. There she comes. And then don't forget about the two three sixteenths socket head ones on the other side, front and rear. That's it for the small ones. Now we can go ahead and take the large ones out. And these four are different lengths. If you notice, looking at the rocker, where they go in there, these are down lower than those. So you don't want to mix those up when you're going back together. You may have noticed I'm just chucking my fasteners on the lift. That's because I've done this job a million times.
And you can see now that my rocker box is getting looser by the second here. The other thing you can do too is just leave these right in there, but I am gonna wanna clean this, clean up the uh, grooves before putting the new rubber seals in there. Okay, then simply remove the rocker box. Bam! Oh, and the faulty gasket is stuck to the bottom. And now you you can see the push rods and the valve springs and such. Let's go ahead and take a look at the offending gasket. Oh, look at her. Oh yeah, see it? Heat has pretty much destroyed that junky gasket and I would be safe to say, look at it, see how it's just falling apart? That was the problem. Coming off in pieces. Look at that, look how dry that is. Look at that, brittle. Look, gasket shouldn't break like that. We're gonna uh, go ahead and get all the gasket material off of here. Once again, I'll pop these out, long and short. Long on that side, short on that side. See the difference? clean up all this oil and these gaskets are pretty stuck on here so we're gonna use a razor blade that's popping it right off of there no problem since this is chrome you're really not gonna hurt it by scraping like that it's gonna take a hell of a lot of razor blade to get through chrome now if your rocker boxes are aluminum then you want to be a little more careful with your razor blade you don't want to dig into the aluminum and cause a new leak with the new gasket. This gasket's just coming apart. Okay, so now we have all the gasket material off of there. And you can see there's still some, some spots where it's on there. So anytime we're scraping gaskets, once again, we're at a 90 degree angle. You're just gonna give it a nice scrape there, whatever it takes. So once again, chrome, it's okay to come at a different angle. Aluminum, be a little more careful. Get all that old residue off of there. There it is, okay. And we'll finish it off with some brake clean. Let's be nice, clean and dry to go back together. Oh, there's a couple more spots. That we missed the first time around. Now I'm gonna show you one more thing that's important on the rocker box. Make sure you get all your gasket material out of there. <clears throat> Clean those grooves out where the rubber seal goes. Got a little bit of brake clean. There's really no reason to wash this whole damn part because then what you're gonna do is you're gonna wash the oil off the rocker shafts and that's not good. Now, I'm gonna show you one more thing here with the rocker box and the rocker shafts. These are just gonna slide out of there and you'll notice there's a notch right there. That notch must be lined up in that hole for the long bolt to go through. If you're trying to put your long bolts back in and it's freaking stopping, it's because this shaft has turned a little bit and it's not lined up with that slot. And once again, that's your rocker shaft. It just comes apart like that. It's a piece of cake. Nothing magical going on here. 
So when you're going back together, you're gonna to line it up and you're gonna struggle a little bit like me. And then you're gonna go in and you're at a certain distance. See, there goes all our oil out of there. We didn't really want that, but hey, you know what? I'm trying to prove a point here. Now, if we look down in there, now that I've put it back in, we can see it's not lined up. Oh, yes it is, yay. But at any rate, if you're going back together and it's just not wanting to go in the hole, make sure the notch on the shaft is correctly aligned. So now I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna put my bolts back in because when I put the new gasket on, I'm just gonna start with these four and that'll align the gasket. Oh, geez, look at that gang. All I did was take the bolt out and never even took this rocker shaft out. And it's not lined up. So you can push it out, line it up. Bada bing, bada bang. Okay, let's go back over here to the engine. And you may notice there's these paint marks on the push rods. We haven't removed the push rods, but let's just say we were taking the cylinder head and doing a base gasket leak. Uh, when it goes back together on a Sportster, there's two different lengths on the push rods. And the one with the three pink bands is the exhaust, and the one with the one brown band is the intake. Uh, we've already cleaned this off. It's imperative, always make sure you got all that old gasket material off of here. Uh, so we're ready to go ahead and put the new gasket on. We stocked these very fine James gaskets on the website. And when I take this out of the package, you're gonna see how far superior this is to the one I just took off of there. This uh, white paper dash 84C gasket from Harley Davidson. No bueno. I do have a complete kit here. I could have, could be doing front and rear. Also has push rod tube seals. And we're gonna show you how much fun it is to scrape the top seals off of these in a bit here. But here's the new gasket that we're fixing the leak. We can get it out of the package. Would you look at that? It's all one piece. It's not two separate pieces. It has got a metal shim inside of it. And it's got Printo seal on it. This gasket's not gonna leak for a good long time. You're gonna line this up on there. You're just gonna slap it on there like so. Make sure, making sure all your holes are aligned. And this is, makes it this job much easier that this is all one piece. Harley did go to this gasket change further on down the line, but because this is an 03, they had this crappy gasket. Time to introduce our rocker box back onto our engine. Once again, I've started the four bolts, so we'll locate it so the gasket doesn't weird out on us. Now notice, look at my rockers. They're way in the wrong place, so you're gonna wanna kinda hold those like so. Kinda look at your gasket there as you're coming down. Okay, so start those two. Make sure we're lined up on both sides. Get those started by hand. And if you've never done this before and you're worried about it, once you get those all started, you can always go like this and go, hey, oh, yeah, look at that, look at that, looks good. And we'll go check the other side. Yep, everything looks good there. So now we'll go ahead and get our other fasteners in there. We don't wanna just tighten down those four large ones when we haven't put the other ones in because all those holes on that gasket must line up. And we do stand a chance if we don't, if we tighten those four and don't put the other ones in, maybe something might be a little bit out of alignment on the gasket itself, which is kind of difficult with this particular gasket, but, okay, now we're gonna put our smaller fasteners in these three holes. OK, 
Okay, we have all the fasteners started. Now we can go ahead and snug them down. Let's get all the uh, small ones snug down first in preparation for torquing the fasteners. These do have a torque spec and yes, they do need to be torqued. And we want to tighten these down evenly because like I said, there, there is going to be just a little bit of pressure on the valves and rockers when you're tightening this down. So basically I'm just running those down until they contact. Then I'm going to do the other three. Yeah, see how there's a little gap right there now? Because as I tighten down all these, it's going to pull this down and put a little bit of pressure on the valves. So it's not going to sit flat until these are all snug down. There, that one's just starting to touch. So on this particular side, I'm going to snug, I'm going to finish snugging these other two small ones. And then I'm going to go to these two large ones on this side to pull it down so that I'm not using that small fastener in the center to pull the, take up that slack there. What do you think guys so far? This isn't really all that hard, is it? You can do this in your garage at home. Okay, just contacted. Just contacted. Now we'll go to the large ones on this side first. And that'll take up, see that, see there's a gap there still. And if we hadn't rolled our motor over, there'd be a huge gap there. And essentially what you'd be trying to do as you're tightening these bolts down is you're pushing the valve open. Hence the reason to roll the motor over. There she comes, nice and even down. Go back to this one. There we go. Now our gap's gone. We've actually, the push rods are actually pushing these down ever so slightly. Go ahead and tighten the last two of these and then we'll get our torque wrench out. We're gonna, we're gonna um, go back over the three small ones because I guarantee they're gonna need to come down a little bit more before they get to the bottom because of rocker boxes up on this side. There we go, there's that one. There's that one. There's that one. Okay, now, referring to your workshop manual. You do have a workshop manual, don't you? Go to the page that has installing the rocker boxes and it's telling me to install bolts 12, 13, 14, and 15. Slow, slowly snug all fasteners in small increments. One turn at a time. Use a cross pattern on the four large bolts that fasten the lower rocker box to the head. This will bleed the lifters. Mm, that's what I was just talking about there. And we're going to tighten the two socket head Allen ones to 90 to 120 inch pounds. Not 90 foot pounds, you break the damn things right off. Darn things. So, and then it says on the little ones, it's saying 10 to 13. And on the larger ones, it's saying 15 to 18 foot pounds. Here's our handy dandy torque wrench. Now, since I'm not a huge fan of inch pounds, I'm gonna tighten those last by hand because I used to do it that way all the time and never had a problem. We're gonna go ahead and tighten the little ones first. And I'm sorry, what was our torque spec? It was, I just said it, 10 to 13. So I'm gonna go for the 13. I like that number. You do need a torque wrench that will go down that low. There's 13. There's that one. There's that one. There's those. Okay, we'll switch to our other socket. 
and then it was 15 to 18. Well, why would they say that? If they're gonna do 13 to 15 and 15 to 18, why not just say 13 and 18? So let's bump it up to 18 here. And let's not forget about the inch pound ones here. As soon as we get these two done. We'll go ahead and tighten the last two to 92, 100 inch pounds. I'll use my calibrated elbow for that. Click. Click, 90 inch pounds. Now don't pretend you're torquing these, you use a torque wrench, okay? Now, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, we got our new gaskets out of our kit. Here's this one, set it on that groove, making sure that it's in that groove all the way around. And then don't forget, Don't forget that one or you'll have a pretty good leak when you get done putting it together and you'll wonder why. Again, make sure it's in the groove. Now we're ready to put our middle piece back on. Again, clean the grooves out. Here's my, my new umbrella valve from the gasket kit. And here, the next thing I'm gonna show you once we get the lid on is how to properly align your rocker boxes. As you'll notice in a sec here, Oh, and there's just a little bit of gasket material on there from the rubber. We'll clean that off real quick. Okay, umbrella, umbrella valves are always gonna be in this hole. You may notice there's a hole on that side. If you put it on that side, it's not gonna be doing anything. They need to be adjacent to the top end breather. Technically, you could put this there or there but since this is the front, we're gonna go ahead and put that umbrella valve in there. You're gonna stick it in the hole and there's a little titty. You're gonna grab that titty and you're gonna pull on it. And then there's a nubby. And that's what keeps that in there. And you're just gonna set this one on top of that one like so. Then we have the other gasket. Once again, goes on, make sure it's in the groove all the way around. No sealer required on this. Some guys like to put a little dab of Hylomar on there. I don't really think that's necessary unless it's acting weird, like it doesn't want to stay in the groove. Okay, underneath the top, the lid screws, there are these paper gaskets. This kit gives you the old school ones too. We're not using those. We have these paper gaskets right here. And you may notice the old paper gaskets are stuck to there like a big dog. So we're gonna have to scrape those off of there real good. Easiest way I've determined to remove these is to, with a razor knife. I like to click the one you break the blades off and they get dull, but I don't have one here. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna get underneath that sucker like so, and then you're just gonna roll this around like so. And there she goes, see her? There it is. And then we got a little bit of excess material on here carefully. See it? They get real stuck on there. And then put our new gasket on and we'll get all four of these done. And then we'll head on back over to the rocker box. Now you'll see that this kind of looks the same from side to side, but it's not. Two close together holes are here. Two far apart holes are on the other side. Generally, I just go ahead and start my screws in the lid, like a so. Double check my gaskets in the groove. Put Carefully put my lid on. Put 
apply just a tiny bit of pressure to it and get those screws started. That's why it's easier to go ahead and put the screws. Now, here's the part I was talking about. See how that middle ring can slide all over creation there? What you wanna do is get it kind of lined up there and then get these snug down, but not all the way. Just a little bit like that. See that little bit of movement there? You want this line and this lines to be lined up. And then you want this, if you run your finger over that, you want all three of those to be pretty even. If you could get a side shot of that, you could see that right now, that's a good spot for that. You don't want this sticking out this way or that way or that way, and you wanna look at those. And on a big twin Evo, you use the corners of it to line it up. And you look at the corners front to rear, and then you can see that it's lined up correctly. Because if you were paying attention and you could see it on film on the other side, you could see that rocker middle piece was kind of able to slide around in there. Now in this last step, I'm pretty confident if I go look in that silly book over there, it's going to say inch pounds on this too. So I'm going to evenly tighten them side to side. You're compressing those gaskets to form a seal. Going side to side to make it nice, evenly tightened. Don't want to over tighten these. Just not a big fan of inch pounds. There we go. Look at that. Bada bing. Rocker box leak fixed. Get our spark plugs back in. Uh, at this point in time, don't forget to take the bike out of gear before you lower the wheel. She's in neutral now. Okay, spark plugs hooked back up, tightened, wires on securely. Bam, get our gas tank on, get this baby fired up. And one other thing too, is when you fire it up after you've had these off, you may hear a little bit of lifter noise. Generally, it'll go away very quickly. Once it pumps up with oil, it'll quiet right down. So don't be alarmed if you hear some lifter noise once when you've had unloaded them. All right, gang, we got our rocker box leak conquered. Now we're gonna fire it up, make sure it still runs, ha! Woo! Woohoo! Hey, what are you doing? Woohoo! <laughs>